Hello everyone, welcome to Medigac. Today our topic is Hydatiform Mole. It is an aberrant placental syndrome where the immature chorionic villi undergo partially proliferative and partially degenerative alterations. These lead to the development of variously sized clusters of tiny cysts. Hydatidiform mole is the name given to it because of its outward resemblance to a hydatid cyst. Now we have discussed this topic into five parts, they are clinical features, types, pathophysiology or etiology, investigations, and treatment. Now come to the clinical features. We can see vaginal bleeding with gelatinous mixed fluid, lower abdominal pain, vomiting in pregnancy, breathlessness, absence of FHS, features of hyperthyroidism, tremors or tachycardia, sick facial expression, presence of pallor, features of preeclampsia alike edema, hypertension. Now come to the types of hydatiform mole. There are mainly two types of hydatiform mole, they are complete mole and partial mole. Let's discuss the features of complete mole. Most common type seen, no fetal parts found, chromosomal diploid in nature. Karyotype is 46XX, 90%, and 46XY, 10%. Now let's discuss the partial mole. Identifiable fetal parts can be found. Chromosomal triploid in nature. Keratotype is 69 X or 69 XXY. Now let's discuss the pathophysiology of hydatiform mole. We will discuss the pathophysiology of complete and partial mole formation. At first the pathophysiology of complete mole formation. At first the enucleated or empty ovum comes in the role. Now there are two probabilities of empty ovum fertilization. First one is fertilization of enucleated ovum by two sperms. Second one is fertilization of enucleated ovum by one haploid sperm. Now this two types of fertilization leads to one result by duplication. And as a result only parental DNA expressed. Now come to the pathophysiology of partial mole formation. Here it starts with haploid ovum. Here also two probabilities of haploid ovum fertilization. First one occurs when normal sperm fertilizes a haploid ovum. Second one occurs when two sperms fertilizes a haploid ovum. And finally this two types of fertilization starts to duplicate. And as a result both maternal and parental DNA expressed. Now come to the investigations part. We can perform full blood count, ABO and RH grouping, USG abdomen, snowstorm appearance is seen, plain X-ray abdomen, absence of fetal shadow and uterus size more than 16 weeks, CT and MRI, usually not recommended if USG, X-ray able to find out. Histopathological examinations of the out products confirms the diagnosis. Now come to the treatment part. Suction and evacuation of the uterus. Supportive therapy like treatment of anemia and infection. Follow-up counseling.